Hey everyone, it's Nylight9, and in this video we are going over the Trial of the Summons, Double Summons, Ifrit and Bahamut, very hard. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is a pretty interesting fight. It definitely requires you to know the pattern and know what is going to proc what, so to speak. Uh, first, I'll go ahead and get into the lineup. So we have Aerith set up as a healer. We also have the uh, Chocobo staff here specifically for solid man award. It's not always necessary. Uh, maybe you could possibly get away with out using it, but that's kind of where we are. Uh, we've got AOE heals. We've got a single target heal. Uh, this is just a stat stick for heal, and this is an ice breach. The reason being, we're not really doing any damage with Aerith. We're only healing and using utility for the ice breach to be able to take Ifrit down. So that's what we're doing here. As far as HP goes, you really want everybody to be above like 8,500 HP. So this is kind of what we're going for here. Uh, for sub equipment, this is heal. This is heal. Uh, there's also some magic defense in there. Obviously, she's got extremely high magic defense. And then this is just for HP. That's how I got her HP to 9,000. Interestingly, uh, I'm using this suit instead of Chocobo suit because uh, with the way that I have it, if I were to equip the Chocobo suit, I wouldn't gain any extra XP. I'd just lose a little bit of heal. So that's kind of what I went for. If your heal is not quite this high, I don't think that that would be a problem because that's not really the linchpin to this fight. Okay, coming over here to Tifa. She's going to be our main damage dealer for Ifrit. Uh, because she has the Frostblade Arcanum on her outfit. She has the gloves here to do 530% physical ice damage because I'm one away from OB6ing them. And here we have Tiger Fangs, and that is just for magic attack decrease to try to help us survive the Mega Flares from Bahamut. And also, because the timing with Cloud's Bandage Sword ability um, Sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to get it off when there's a bunch of other hectic stuff going on. Notice here we've got 8,800 HP. We have like nothing added to magic defense. So, you know, she's going to be taking a lot of damage. Uh, sub equipment here. We have Bald Eagle. That's for physical attack and ice potency. We have the Shiva sword here. Um, and this is because it gives fire resist and HP. And, you know, that... Fire resist is mostly what's going to kind of make up her for her physical defense being lackluster uh, as far as, you know, taking damage from Ifrit. And then also we have Nameless here, and that's for HP. We don't really care about the lightning, it says. So that's uh, the setup that I went with here. Kind of brought me back to my early days uh, going against Ifrit and trying to jam on as much stuff as possible. Um, it was really kind of fun. Uh, one thing just to note here, uh, my ice potency is level four. That's not super impressive. I'm one point away from level five, which would be much better, but I just couldn't get there. Okay, last we have Cloud. Cloud is our main damage dealer for Bahamut. And for him, that's why we're using single target damage instead of uh, summon. By the way, we're using Diamond Dust from Tifa, and that's just because she's our ice damage dealer, and that's how we're going to take out Ifrit with a big chunk. Uh, I'm using the FF9 weapon Zidane Sword because it's my highest percentage damage that I have. So that's that. And because Bahamut isn't weak to any specific element, you know, that just kind of makes sense. Bandage Sword here is for magic defense for the whole party. It stacks to high, which is really nice and useful. And for 4 ATB, being able to hit all three people is really nice, especially because it starts out with mid. The only issue is it only extends plus four seconds. So essentially, if you pass it twice, you're going to get 16 second window of defense. And that is easy in the beginning, as you'll see, but can be harder later on. And in the run, you're going to see I actually botched that window by about a second and a half. And so, yeah, anyway. Just be kind of weary of that, but that's also why we have the Tiger Fangs. Here, uh, this is a stat stick and a stat stick, both for physical attack. And this is Blizzard Blow. I do have a four star. Uh, decided to go with a three star just to make things a little spicier. Um, but this will just help him do a little bit of damage to Ifrit. And you have to have ice damage to kill his ignition gauge. Okay. 
coming over here sky splitter is just for physical attack enemy launcher here is attack and physical ability potency just trying to make him our beefy damage dealer and amaranth claws is hp and physical ability potency so ultimately cloud has uh level seven which is max level physical ability potency that's pretty nice plus 80 percent damage on top of his already quite good 780 percent uh hit with free energy so that is the entire team and the only other thing i will say before we start the fight is pay close attention because it really does matter depending obviously on your power of your team but if you're similarly situated to mine, it really does matter how you go about doing this fight. So enjoy. Okay, coming into the fight, the first thing we're gonna do is switch targets on Ifrit. We're gonna hop over to Aerith. We're gonna wait a little bit. We're gonna throw an Ice Breach. Then we're gonna come over to Tifa. We're gonna do our Freezing Blow. We're gonna come over to Cloud, use one Blizzard Blow, then start saving ATB. We notice that Crimson Flare is charging and we want to get two Sanctuaries off. When your ATB is one from full, do your first Sanctuary. Then as soon as you have enough ATB to hit another one, go ahead and do that. Then jump over to Aerith and start saving ATB. You're going to switch your stance and you're going to take the Crimson Flare. This is going to result in, I think Tifa goes the lowest, but she'll still have a little over 1500 health. So we're totally fine. This animation, by the way, is sick looking. I really like it. Okay, now that that's over, hit the Kiraga, switch your stance back. You're gonna Ice Breach immediately after that, and then you are going to focus all of your ice damage on Ifrit. Do not even pay attention to Bahamut right now. He is charging Mega Flare, and that is part of the strategy because we're gonna let him do it. Okay, he's going to count down from five all the way, and we are going to kill Ifrit, is, or at least do as much damage to Ifrit during this time as possible. Now, I can tell you at any time, we could switch back over, and we could hit, you know, one of the ice blows with Tifa and one of the free energies with Cloud and break his, his whole gauge down. The problem is, we need extra time to kill Ifrit. And if we wait till, like, you know, two seconds or one second, well, then he picks up that countdown on his next Mega Flare, and that is a massive problem. Because the second one he does, or the next iteration once it's, if it's dead, is considerably stronger. So here, just keep doing your ice damage. You know, heal everybody up little by little. I, I usually kind of alternate with Aerith. It's like two heals and then another ice breach. Get your, your limits up, your summons up. Just try to keep everybody up. And then pay attention here. We see one on Mega, a Mega Flare. So I jumped over to Tifa, and I'm just holding ATB. Holding ATB because I know that once he gets ready to actually cast it, he does this Flare Aura. So his magic attack goes up big time. So I immediately start using the debuff Upper Shot, right? This is the second round of Upper Shot. Now, what I did do there was a mistake is I started on cloud with his sanctuary just a little bit too early. And so even though I've got everybody now to high, uh, ultimately it's going to run out right before the mega flare. But because I did the upper shots with Tifa, which lasts considerably longer, almost double as long, uh, I'm actually going to survive this anyway. And so, you know, I guess that's just something I guess to be aware of. Okay, after this, I queue up the Mega Combo, and I was really thinking, do I need to make sure everybody's healed, or do I want to try to do damage? Eh, it was a little bit of a mistake there. It could have been a little cleaner, but it's not going to matter. Everything is going to be fine. So we do all this. This Diamond Dust is really going to hurt Ifrit, and you can see here he's, he's really low. So now we're going to try to finish Ifrit off. Now, I don't know exactly how Bahamut's... Um, like who he targets i don't know how that works okay i've seen some other videos i think people believe that maybe whoever has the highest hp is who he targets but i can tell you it i don't think it's guaranteed because i was trying to make sure that Aerith had the highest hp as soon as if died because that's when the dive bomb starts it's like the next move that happens after that but you can see here Aerith clearly has the most hp right 
In fact, Tifa not only has not the most HP, but as far as HP cap, she's also the least. But she gets targeted anyway. And I'm okay that that happened because ultimately, it's, it's good to show videos sometimes when things don't go exactly according to plan. All you need to know is that you just need to get as much damage in as possible. And to be honest, it doesn't even matter if you switch dances or not because 12,000 damage is just never happening. <laughs> She's never surviving that. But it's actually the one good thing about having uh, the healer up is there's no way you're going to die. So you just make sure here that Cloud does not auto-cast Sanctuary. Because that's the only way that we're not clearing this at this point. So, here comes Cloud. Everything's going well again. He gets the Mega Flare gauge down. And the problem that I've had with some of these runs is, like I said, if he picks up the Mega Flare count from lower, I've actually had it where he basically kills me before I'm able to break that gauge down, uh, especially if he kills Cloud first. So this is exactly how I've done it. I've cleared this three times now, and yeah, haven't had any problems. The other good thing about Aerith being up here is that those Umbral Strikes really aren't that scary. So it's kind of, I don't know, if you, you have your two damage dealers, it's easiest to just kind of beat him down. Uh, however, if you have Aerith, then, you know, you just heal one. And then you start throwing whatever damage you have with her. Ruin Ruz, you know, anything. I've had this come down to the wire a couple of times. But ultimately, um, once you kind of understand the pattern, and you, if you follow exactly what I've done here, then uh, you shouldn't have any trouble, and you should be able to clear this. So here he's going to do another dive bomb, and that is where your kind of final countdown, might you might say, begins. But you can see he's only got a sliver of health, so this last free energy here should finish him off, and it does. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. I tried to be as detailed and as specific as possible with everything I did and all the decisions I made. Let me know if for some reason, though, you have a team that's similar in strength and you can't beat it. I'd like to do everything I can to help you. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, just know that I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.